Could somebody give me any reason that I should believe Jorn Vandersloot now? I'm not hearing anything. Because Jorn Vandersloot has told at least, at least, focus on at least, seven different stories about how Natalie Holloway, the American beauty, all a student, heading off to college in pre-med, how she seemingly vanished without a trace with him. Natalie, on her high school senior trip to Aruba, was heavily chaperoned. Uh, the school didn't do anything wrong. The chaperones didn't do anything wrong. Enter Jorn Vandersloot. Joining me is Cheryl McCollum, host of a hit podcast, Zone 7, forensics expert and founder director of the Cold Case Research Institute. Cheryl, I, I, this case has gone on for so long. You and I have just gotten back from Aruba with Natalie's mother, Beth, where we really left no stone unturned trying to get any type of renewed evidence or renewed clue. And I got to tell you, uh, do you remember, Cheryl, when we all drove, two things really stick in my mind out of so many, well, three, including <laughs> us being threatened with arrest and you running and leaving me there. Uh, <laughs> but that, yeah, ha, ha. But that said, when we went to the tip of the island and saw the lighthouse where many people had said she had been buried. It was so desolate. It was so windy. Remember, it, it would blow things over. And that pack of wild dogs that were starving and their little ribs sticking yeah. out, just begging mm. for food. It was rocky. That, just the thought of her bones being in some makeshift grave there. And the story that Beth, Natalie's mother, told us when she was there, she got there the night she learned Natalie was not on the boat returning home. And she had been frantic, just out of her mind, looking for her daughter. She went everywhere to the casino where Natalie had been, to the bar, Carlos and Charlie's, wherever, where she had been, Every, the hotel, everywhere, just running. And at the hours and hours passed. The police weren't helping her. And she went to this, there was a, a, a small mountain, small, more like a steep hill. And she was so beside herself, she saw a roadside cross. She said, stop. And the guy let her out. And she literally threw herself on the ground and was beating the ground and crying and praying and screaming, where is Natalie? Help me find Natalie. And she looked up and she saw another cross and she basically walked slash crawled. Mm -hmm. in the dirt to the next cross. And then there was another, and it was taking her up the mountain. It was one of those stations of the cross walks. And she went up either 12 or 17 crosses up the side of that steep hill. And at the top, there was a chapel, which is about the size of a kitchen. And she said for the first moment, she felt peace. And she knew in her heart at that moment that Natalie was dead. I will never forget and to think she's been going through this for so long. You know, Nancy, I always tell people that a lot of times you and I, when we're at a scene or we're with a family, you're a prosecutor and I'm a crime scene investigator and we can't stop being those things. But in that moment, we were three mamas. And I mean, I just remember looking at you at one point and I mean, there was no words needed to be spoken, but we were both just so choked up and our heart was breaking for her telling us that story. And then the three of us going up that hill to that chapel. So tomorrow morning, it pulls, comes full circle. Jorn Vandersloot, who after he murdered Natalie and has never told the truth about what happened, he, of course, the judge's son, never gets prosecuted. There's no real investigation in Aruba. Aruba doesn't care about a missing American girl. They couldn't care less. They're all about protecting the father, the judge, and he's all about protecting his son, Jorn Vandersloot. 
he leaves, he goes to Peru, where he kills another girl, Stephanie Tassiana Flores, a beautiful young girl um, who he also happened to meet in a local casino. They leave the casino, and she ends up dead. He bludgeoned and strangled her dead, and then went out and got five breakfast. Years to five day. years to the day. He uh, strangled and bludgeoned her dead, and then he went out and got, like, croissants and coffee and sat at the foot of her body and, what, read his iPad and ate his breakfast with her dead body lying there. He finally got convicted in Peru for that. Then, that's why he's back in the States, he speaks to Natalie's mother and promises for thousands and thousands of dollars he will tell her where Natalie's remains are. She gives him, I think it was 25 grand, and of course he lies. That's why he's in the U.S. He was extradited here on charges of extortion and fraud. That's why he's here. Part of his deal, Cheryl McCollum, is that he's got to reveal the truth about Natalie. Fat chance. Fat chance. Why is this even happening? Well, you know, he originally pled not guilty. Then they worked out this deal with him where the FBI is supposed to verify every single thing that he's saying in this statement. I believe there's a chance they've already done that. And that's what they've been waiting on for them to say, yep, we kind of verified everything he said. We have found witnesses. We talked to the Capo brothers. So I'm prayerful. You do know it's Calpo. Calpo. K-A-L-P-O-E. And you insist on saying Capo. It's Calpo. Calpo. <laughs> well, they're POSs. Who I'll also tell you that. need to be prosecuted. You know what? 100%. You're right. So are you telling me you believe the story he's going to spout out tomorrow morning has been corroborated? I believe that is what's happened. I believe that's what has been going on all this time. And that's why tomorrow they've set the date because the FBI, I believe, has cooperated. How many stories has he told so far? And what were they? Oh, my gosh, Nancy. Oh, that he dropped her off at the hotel was one. Then he left her at the beach. Then he buried her in front of, you know, Can you slow new, down? the hotel. He did first say he dropped her off at the hotel. Oh, yeah. Okay, next. He gave her to the security guards. She fell and hit her head. He left her at the beach. He buried her under a new hotel they were you building. You know, you're leaving out so much detail, and I'm very surprised because a story rich in detail makes it more believable. The story that he gave about leaving her at the beach was that she, Natalie Holloway, wanted to have sex with him, Jorn Vandersloot, no, right. <laughs> that did not happen. And that he, Jorn Vandersloot, said, no, I can't do it. It would be wrong. And leaves her on the beach. That is one story. Does anybody in this studio, okay, nobody believes that. that that's a lie. That he left her at the hotel. That's a lie. That she choked on something and, and died lying on the beach. How likely is that scenario? That he slips her a roofie and at, at the casino. She leaves with him and the Calpo brothers, Satish and... Who's Satish's brother? Uh, they leave in the car with Vandersloot and Natalie in the back seat, leaving her friends. She would never have done that. And then she just happens to choke and die on the beach. That's not true. Didn't he say he buried her at the construction site, construction site of the new hotel? Correct. That was a story. Then mm -hmm. there was a story about burying her, destroying her body and burying her with dog bones and crushing them. Remember that? All mixed together. And his dad, remember, this is the most bogus statement I've ever heard. He says his dad comes up and says, wait right here. I'm going to go get some you know, bags and some other stuff, and I'll be back. And me and you were like, what parent tells their child, stay with this dead body, I'll be back? I mean, the whole thing was so bogus, it was ridiculous. Let's see, there's a hotel. Oh, oh wait. Then there's a story where he threw her body overboard, like took it out to sea. Mm -hmm. Now there's a story because of an email he sent to a friend that... He got a boat 
and to cry to see, or is he blaming his father since he gave his father a heart attack and the father died? Um, is he going to blame everything on his dad now? And we're, we're actually going to, what, eat that with a silver spoon? I will gag on that. Nancy, he also said he threw her in a swamp. Remember that one? He also said he buried her, you know, up in the hills where there's a cemetery. I mean, there's lie after lie, story after story. None of them are believable. None of them. I'm curious as to why we're, apparently the authorities are set to believe it now. Um, I mean, his story, and I take that with a box of salt, but how could they possibly have corroborated any story that he's telling now this late in the game? Unless the brothers have come forward, if they went and interviewed them, if there's other eyewitnesses, you know, you don't know who all was involved. Mama had to know. Mama had to know that daddy left and went somewhere. She knew they were on those computers typing like they were in touch with each other over email. She knows. Remember even the story Beth told us when Beth was giving them those bracelets and Mama just broke down crying and saying she was sorry. She's sorry because she knows the truth. Do you think the way that they have corroborated it, if they have, is through, I remember his last name is Deepak, Satish and Deepak Kalpo, through them? And if so, why aren't they being prosecuted? Well, we don't know what's going on over there. If, if something's in the works. I think after tomorrow, they are not going to be able to ignore it anymore. It's going to be, you know, full court press, I think, at that point, because whatever comes out tomorrow, and if it's been corroborated in any way, let's say she's been recovered if she was not taken out to sea. You don't think let's we would have they, heard that by now if her body had been discovered or her remains? We would I don't that. know. We just found out within days that he was going to, you know, confess to it. So I don't know. I'm hopeful. I am hopeful that Beth is finally going to get some answers. Nancy, she sat with us in front of that chapel. And this is the part that just broke my heart. She looked at the two of us and said, I know y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but I brought her passport just in case. She said that for 10 years after her daughter went missing on a high school senior trip, that she took Natalie's passport everywhere she went. She never left the house without Natalie's passport on her body, in her purse, in her suitcase, wherever she went, in the hopes that she would get a call that Natalie had been found and she would have to go to Natalie and bring her home. Uh, I mean, this this is a mama that spent $25,000 to find out where parts of her might be. This is a mama that has gone just to great lengths to get any part of her back. That's all she's ever asked for. So again, I am prayerful that tomorrow she is going to get that opportunity. I want that too. But I don't know that I can believe anything that Jorn Vandersloot says. And if he's being backed up by two other liars, Deepak and Satish Kalpo, I mean, is that the corroboration? <laughs> I'd have to have a lot more corroboration than that. And we're asking a federal <laughs> judge to swallow it hook, line, and sinker? Um. I also wonder, is he getting lighter treatment in exchange for his new story about what happened to Natalie Holloway? I mean, I know that he raped her because he could describe her underwear in great detail to her mm -hmm. family when they went down looking for her. I believe he said it had flowers on it. He could describe right. it and the mom recognized it. What? Mm -hmm. They were embroidery, he said. So again... I mean, even in the dark, in the back seat of a car, he can see that well. I mean, he know he knew too much intimate about her. Wait, are you actually debating whether he killed her or raped her? I don't need to prove that. I already no. know that. No, I'm saying he knew too much information about her underwear in a dark back seat. Clearly, he did. Clearly, he harmed or her on, before he killed her. Or, or on a beach. So, right. oh, well, you left out the story about the fisher fishermen's huts. That was a story oh, that she was killed and left at the fishermen's huts. I mean, there's just been so 
many stories. And do you remember when the party boat was seized and searched based on and a the story? DJ arrested? Mm -hmm. The DJ arrested, yes, under one of the theories that that was the boat used to dump her body. Now, we're learning about apparently an email, an email that was sent through a so-called friend of Jorn Vandersloot's that has details. Uh, we are expected to learn that he is saying, well, wait, what's his news story, Cheryl? That they got a boat, his dad somehow got a boat, and they took care of business. And that's all he was going to say about it. Yes, uh, an email sent by Jorn Vandersloot revealing a piece of evidence just two days after Natalie goes missing. This email, we're just now learning about it. Vandersloot writes to a friend, quote, My dad got a boat. Two days later, we went for a ride and took care of things. Quote, that's all I'm going to say. As the Aruban police twiddle their thumbs watching Nally's mother running frantically around the island, if this is to, is to be believed, that means her body was being held somewhere for two days before Gordon Van Vandersloot and his father, the judge, disposed of the body. For two days, they had, they had time to find her body. Cheryl? Nancy, if you remember, it took Beth and her whole group less than an hour to track him down. Now that is somebody from another country who's panicked, but yet she was able to go to the Holiday Inn, get to Carlos and Charlie's, get information about Johan Vandersloot, get his address, and go to his house. But police there can't bother to do that. They or can't search, search it. For her. Or search it. Yeah, they didn't start searching until the 5th of June. Now, another interesting point is that Vandersloot, neither Vandersloot nor his father owned a boat, so they would have had to borrow or rent the boat. Now, that's leaving a trail a mile wide, Cheryl McCollum, but Aruba police but didn't find that. Nope, they didn't even look. They didn't try to track that down. But you remember when we were over by the fish hut, there were boats just pulled up. I mean, they could have easily just stolen one for the brief time they would have needed it. I'm trying to figure out what is going to happen now. Number one, um, Jorn Vandersloot is a liar. Even when mm -hmm. the mom, Beth, paid him 25 grand, he still lied to her. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his story is going to be tomorrow, but apparently they're pinning a lot of hope on this email that he sent, this letter, so to speak, that he sent two days after Natalie goes missing. And why they haven't found that before, or did they? I don't know. That said, we are understanding that the FBI has corroborated some of his news story. I don't know that that will ever be able to satisfy Beth because I don't know that she'll ever truly believe it's real, Cheryl. No, I agree, Nancy. But, you know, this has been a saga that you and I have been with her the whole time. We sat with her in 2005. We sat with her at that chapel in Aruba. And we are going to be sitting with her tomorrow in court. And again, I pray that she gets the answers that she needs. What do you think will then happen to Jorn Vandersloot? I, I hate for him to go back to Peru because in the Peruvian jail where he's spending uh, time, sentenced to hard time, in the murder of Stephanie Tassiana Flores, who killed five years to the day that he murdered Natalie, Again, he also met her in a casino, same way he met Natalie. Mm -hmm. When he goes back there, uh, again, when you don't know a horse, look at his track record. He has unlimited conjugal visits. He has drugs. He has alcohol. He gets whatever he wants. He's already had a wife, two babies, and a new girlfriend because she is, quote, younger. Uh, why well, would he not want to go back there? What? Well, here's one. There's one little piece that'll be different for him. He cannot confess without the Capo, Calpo, whatever brothers. Calpo, Satish, and Deepak. Write it down. They, they drove him away. 
they were involved in wherever they went the moment they left Carlos and Charlie. They were part of this. So whatever he says tomorrow, when he does get back to Peru, he's going to go as a snitch. And I don't care what prison you're talking about. That is a horse of a different color. I'm telling you. Right. Like you think the Calpos are going to order a hit on him behind bars in a Peruvian jail while we're still back in a room? No. But the other inmates will know he's a snitch. He's king of the jail in Peru. They're not going to do a thing. The guards protect him. Listening, not hearing. Look, the only hope is that based on what he says tomorrow, and of course, many people think this won't happen, that he will confess to some sort of blame in Natalie's death and that Aruba will then prosecute him. That's the only place he can be prosecuted for murder. And that is absolutely what I think needs to happen. I think Aruba, if this happens at 930, they'll be done by 11 o'clock. I think by 1 o'clock our time, they need, they need to have a statement out that what they're going to do about it. So, Cheryl McCollum, question. Regarding Jorn Vandersloot's story that he's going to tell tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. many people believe Aruba will never prosecute him, no matter what. Do you think that they will? I know you think that they should. Of course they should. Mm -hmm. But do you think that they will? I think tomorrow is going to be a whole lot tougher for them not to, because this is not something they can explain away. The other, quote, confessions, they said, well, he was smoking marijuana, we can't take it. Or it was done this way, and we can't accept it. Tomorrow, this is in a federal court. This is now a legal confession that he's done through an attorney. They can't not accept it. I'm thinking through all of the ramifications that could happen tomorrow. A lot of evidence has been placed on a letter to someone, David G. It's an email describing how he and his father dumped Natalie's body at sea. What boat did they use? Is there any way to corroborate that? The Calpo brothers know what happened the night that Natalie was murdered. But yet, even after all this time, they have never revealed that. Cheryl, I believe, because it would implicate them. Agreed. And that's what I'm saying. I think there's more than one witness. There's more than one person that's got information and knowledge. And if he starts to tell this story, it lines up with what these people can say. This is what happened. He contacted me. We went here. We went there. Boom. We've got him. And if they can line this up and show, here's his story. This is his final shot to tell the truth. I do not believe tomorrow would be happening if they didn't have all these ducks in a row. I don't believe that. They're not going to let him make this show and make this confession through an attorney and then go check it. I think they did it before. One thing I, I believe, while many people seemingly have forgotten about the Nally Holloway case, when we are with Beth, when you and I are with her, it's very clear that the pain and the emotion and the bereavement is still mm -hmm. just beneath the surface. It's still very raw for her. Her pain has never gone away. She wears that bracelet, mm -hmm. hope, faith, and love. And, you know, again, at one point, she basically says to us, y'all both have daughters. What would you do for her? Well, I mean, there's no question what you would do for Lucy or what I would do for Caroline or our sons. But, I mean, she basically put that out there. Of course I'm going to go to Aruba. Of course I'm going to give him $25,000. Of course I'm going to go and meet with him in prison. Of course, I'm going to do all of these things and do all these interviews and go to all this extreme searches for my child. Tomorrow morning, we will be in court with Beth in front of the judge. We will see Jorn Vandersloot, whether he elocutes, speaks, or whether he has a written statement, which I would imagine would be what he would rather do. It will all unfold tomorrow.
will he tell the truth? Will he be forced to tell the truth? He's never told the truth in the past. Based on what he says tomorrow, will Aruba actually open up a murder investigation and follow through? If they don't, what, if anything, can be done about it? And why wouldn't they? That's a question that we have been asking for years. Why is Aruba so hell-bent on obfuscating the truth and the Natalie Holloway murder? Will we get answers tomorrow? We wait as justice unfolds. Goodbye, friend. Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on YouTube. To get the very latest, subscribe to Crime Online here.